So whilst the tour of the UEES Warhammer hasn't changed much since the last Invictus Week celebrations, when you step aboard, you're still immediately struck with the possibilities that this gargantuan warship hints at in the future. And those possibilities are incredibly exciting. I'm Farrister, and I'm absolutely obsessed with the Javelin-class destroyer in Star Citizen. And so, in this video, I invite you to hop aboard for the ride towards what might be. By way of disclaimer, most Star Citizen videos on this channel aim to strictly cover the here and now, as ultimately, until we actually see a lot of this stuff in-game, there's always going to be an element of uncertainty. But in this video, we'll venture together a little further into that unknown, so please take this with a pinch of salt, and not as a definite promise of what will be in the future. We'll start with the obvious, the scale of this beauty. Lots of games out there depict what large-scale capital ship combat might look like, but what's different about Star Citizen is that the ships are all built from the ground up around a first-person experience. So, when you experience a large ship like the Javelin-class destroyer, walking around the corridors, and let's face it, probably getting lost sometimes, your perspective is one which teaches you just how big this ship is. And that's fairly unique, and adds to the level of immersion. That's not to say you need to be on board the biggest warship to appreciate that, but it helps. And with a ship of this scale, you'll need a considerable crew to operate it. With multiple turrets, and one might assume multiple bridge crew stations, there's plenty of scope for a large group of players to get together and make something happen. A common criticism of group play, amongst people who think a ship like a Javelin should be crewed by a solo player with NPCs or Blades, is that people simply don't want to crew these ships. My experience has been somewhat different, and during some of the big events like Xenothreat, having a group of players on a ship like a Hammerhead is an awesome experience, and it was never too difficult to find people looking for a ship to join. And taking out the Javelin is not likely to be an everyday occurrence, owing to those crew requirements, and the pure expense of running the ship. Certainly, my group will only be heading out once or twice per week, at a scheduled, pre-arranged time. Not only does the ship provide a sandbox for a large group of players to work together, but it also provides for a lot of learning experiences to get the most out of that teamwork. Whether it's as simple as just learning your own way around the ship, how to fix things up, or get the gunners working together with the pilot, or perhaps as intricate as mastering different bridge stations that may follow, like scanning or electronic warfare. Deciding when to launch the ship from the hangar, and when to recover it safely. This, in my view, is the Star Citizen Raid-type vehicle, and that's incredibly exciting. And naturally, whenever there's fun to be had, there will be people who get a buzz from trying to spoil that fun. So, having players savvy enough to look out for stealth torpedo attackers, and astute enough to shoot down incoming ordnance or would-be boarders before they reach the ship, makes staying alert all the more important. For both the role player and the group player, the Javelin offers the absolute pinnacle of possibility. And that's why I get so excited to walk around the Warhammer. To hop in the turret and see what some of the firing arcs are like. To start mapping out those corridors to learn the way around the ship. To sit in the hollow briefing room and dream about the day when we'll be taking our ship out for real, defending her, and making our own stories. I'm in no doubt it'll be a huge amount of work for a team to master this ship, but I'm also left very optimistic that we'll have a fun time getting there. So, what do you think? Did you even need convincing about the potential that these large ships offer? You can share your dreams in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you might press that like button, and if this sort of thing tickles your fancy, you might press that subscribe button so you can be notified of future videos as they go live. If you've got this far, this is my first video recorded with a new microphone, so I'd love to know how you think it sounds. Otherwise, and as ever, thank you for watching.